if you have crossed off all other illnesses, then you shouldn't be chasing down individual symptoms. That's a great way to stay stuck. How's it going everybody? My name is Miguel from CFS Recovery. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the keys to not getting better, the keys to staying sick, staying stuck. And the reason we're gonna look at it from this perspective is there's a man named Charlie Munger and he's a very successful individual and he looks at things from a different perspective. He talks about inverted thinking and inverted thinking is a great way to solve problems. Now, instead of thinking of all the right things to do in recovery, which I've shared tons and tons of tips on this channel, there's over 500 videos on this channel at this point. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to guarantee that you don't get better. If you were to try to guarantee staying stuck, not getting better, what would you have to do? And that's what we're gonna talk about. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Miguel. I am 27 years old, I live in Canada, and I struggled with a hypersensitive nervous system issue, AKA CFS, for four and a half to five years. And at my absolute worst, I was completely bed bound. I was actually in the hospital for a couple months and I couldn't even roll over in bed. It was hard to even lift my head off the pillow. I had to get spoon fed many, many, many times. I even had to, at one point, have my dad blend food and I had to drink it. And even that was difficult for me because I had zero energy. My body was in complete pain. I couldn't even really lift a spoon to my mouth without triggering absolutely horrible symptoms. So I know what it's like to be absolutely debilitated. And that was five years ago. I've worked my way out of it. And now I live a pretty normal life and I'm very appreciative of where I'm at. I can exercise, I can run, I can work out, I can work full time, I can eat whatever I want, I could stay up late, I could travel. So I've pretty much gained my life back. And in this channel, I help people recover from their CFS or their hypersensitive nervous system issues. Now I wanna preface this video as well because I don't want you guys to feel bad if a lot of these are things that you guys are doing. In fact, if you guys are watching this video right now, the chances are you are doing some of these things, if not a majority of them. I myself had made so many mistakes over the years. I wish someone told me this sooner and I wish someone told me it in a way that was really easy for me to understand because it was really hard to find information out there that wasn't super scientific and talking about cells and this and that. Like I wasn't a scientist. I just needed somebody to tell me what was going on. And luckily I found a doctor who taught me how to get better. But in this video, like I said, we're gonna talk about the opposite. How do you guarantee staying suck? So the number one best way to stay stuck and not get better is to search on forums for the solution. When I talk about forums, I'm talking about Reddit, Facebook groups, any kind of Google forums about CFS, you're gonna find a lot of dark information. There's people just venting on there. They're saying, I've been sick for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. I've tried this and that, and then it's just, a complete mess. Actually, the people in our program, Recovery Jumpstart, we refer to those areas on the internet, those forums or those groups as networks of doom because there's nothing really positive about it. And in fact, there have been many people who have recovered who tried to provide solutions in those groups and everybody just shoots them down. They tell them they were either never sick in the first place or they're making it up or they're trying to sell them something when really people are just trying to help. So that's a great way to stay stuck. If you continue to spend time on forums or Facebook groups that just cause you more stress where it's not really solution focused, that's a great way to stay stuck. So the first thing we tell people in the program is to get out of any other Facebook groups and absolutely do not Google any more symptoms because that's a sure way that you will stay suck. That's number one. Number two is to continue doing the same things that are not working. Now, I remember when I was sick, I had no clue what to do. I mean, I knew that meditation was good. I knew I should probably eat healthy. I knew I should probably do deep breathing every day. So I would do these things, but they weren't working. It's because I didn't really understand that even though I was doing all these things, internally, my mind was completely stressed. So I'm not saying you don't have to do meditation. You don't have to do deep breathing, but if it hasn't been working then stop doing it, because what's the definition of insanity? doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. So a sure way to stay stuck is to continue doing what you've been doing for the last few months or last few years that you've been sick that hasn't worked. If you want radical change, there needs to be radical change in your life, in the way you approach things and the things that you do. If you do what you've always done, you'll get the results you've always got. 
So that's a second really good way to stay stuck is to continue doing the things that haven't been working. And I get it. A lot of these things that you're doing right now that maybe aren't necessarily working, you've read that they've helped other people. You read that they're good to do. Like we all know meditation is great. We all know that eating healthy is great. But if your main focus is on that and you haven't been getting better, then you need to shift your focus to somewhere else because clearly this is not working. A lot of times people come into the program and they've been doing literally everything in their power. Every second of their day is focused on recovery. We just changed a few things. We're actually not adding anything more. We're actually removing things. We're telling them, hey, it doesn't have to be this complicated. Let's simplify this and they get a lot better. So that's a sure way to stay stuck is to continue doing the same things that haven't worked in the past. Number three is trying to treat individual symptoms. I used to do this all the time and most people do before we realize that it's a nervous system issue because if you have heart issues, you know, if your heart rate is very high, if you have heart palpitations, sharp chest pain, of course, you have to go to the doctors, you have to get scans and blood tests done to make sure that everything else is ruled out, to make sure you don't actually have a heart condition. Other things like headaches, you have to get like a CT scan just to make sure there's nothing happening in your brain. And you know, seeing a neurologist, seeing a specialist, seeing endocrinologist, all these different things, it's great that you've gotten those tests in the past. And if you're watching this video right now, then I'm assuming the reason you're on YouTube searching this up is because you've tried so many things in the past that haven't worked and you've seen specialists and despite all the symptoms you're experiencing, despite all the discomfort, the doctors are turning you away, telling you that you're completely normal. They're saying, hey, Miguel, your scans are fine. Your test is fine. Just go home, get some rest. If you still feel like this in the next three months, if you still feel crappy, then visit us again and maybe we'll run more tests. That's probably what they've told you up to this point, which is how you ended up on this channel. But if you have crossed off all other illnesses, then you shouldn't be chasing down individual symptoms. That's a great way to stay stuck because it's a rabbit hole that never ends. I've heard of cases of people having 20, 30, 40 symptoms at a time. And if you treat all of those, you're gonna go crazy. It's never gonna end. And so what you have to do is put everything under this umbrella problem, this hypersensitive nervous system problem, and then all these other issues, all these other symptoms, just throw them under that umbrella. The headaches, the heart palpitations, the POTS, the vertigo, the dizziness, the chronic pain, the visual snow, all of these things, you have to throw all of them under that hypersensitive nervous system issue umbrella. Because if you chase down every single symptom, you're gonna be stuck in this forever. If not, you're gonna go on a downward spiral because you're gonna start getting anxious with every single symptom that comes up. So that's a great way to stay stuck with CFS. If you chase down each individual symptom, I've never seen it work. I've seen the opposite work of treating it as one problem, the hypersensitive nervous system. The number four way to guarantee that you do not get better is tracking your activity. I used to think it was a good thing to track my activity, but the reason why I was doing it was completely wrong. Right? I was tracking things based out of fear, out of emotion, because I was scared of overdoing it. I was tracking every single step. I was tracking how many times I was getting up during the day, how many glasses of water I was pouring, how long I was sitting up for. I was over tracking everything. And the thing is, when you over track things, you tend to build these safety parameters in your life and you become hyper vigilant. So it's funny, there's a coach in our program, shout out to Junior, he was sharing the other day that there was a time in his recovery where he would have to go microwave his own food. And typically he'd microwave it for maybe a minute. And just him standing up was a struggle. So if his food wasn't defrosted or warm by that minute mark, he would microwave it for another 30 seconds. But then that extra 30 seconds, he would tell himself, oh shoot, 30 seconds, like I shouldn't have gone over a minute. Now that I did this extra 30 seconds, I'm gonna crash. Like I just set myself back another two weeks. So over tracking things is a sure way to stay stuck because that's gonna keep you on high alert 24 seven. You're gonna be tracking how long you're sitting up, how many showers you take during the week, what you're eating, if you drank enough water, if that one small bite of chocolate or sugar is gonna make you crash. And that anticipation is gonna to lead to constant setbacks and symptom flare-ups. It's gonna make your anxiety just shoot through the roof. So that's a great way to stay stuck is by over tracking your activities. And I do wanna mention this as well is tracking your steps. Do not track your steps, do not track your heart rate. If you are wearing a heart rate monitor right now, I created a video up here that breaks down why you should absolutely not be doing that. So if you are wearing a heart rate monitor right now, take it off. Unless you've been told by a doctor to do it, take the heart rate monitor off. It's only gonna cause you more anxiety. And I'm sure you've seen it in the past where you're walking around 
if you see your heart rate go past a certain point, you're gonna start getting anxious and then it could lead to a panic attack. So you look at it, it could be 100. Then as you're looking at it, you're watching it in real time increase to 105, 110, 120, 130 until you just look away and, and you feel like a complete wreck. So there's the heart rate monitor tracker and also the steps. There have been people who, as soon as they pass a certain threshold of steps, let's say their limit is a thousand, their limit that they set for themselves is a thousand. If it goes over and goes to 1200 or 1100 or 1050, they start getting anxious and they already anticipate a crash coming up. So that can definitely lead to symptoms if you are over tracking those things. Number five is comparing your progress week to week. Now, I talk about this in the Recovery Jumpstart program and all of our mentorship calls that we have with people because we're working with them for an extended period of time. Things aren't always gonna be moving in that upward trajectory, right? On a weekly scale or a daily scale. You need to look at things from a monthly perspective. So it's kind of like stock trading, right? If you look at a stock chart, if you look on the hourly or 30 minute time chart or a daily time chart, the stock is up and down, it's all over the place. It's very volatile, right? Whereas if you zoom out and look on a monthly time chart, there's a little bit more stability. You can actually see some pretty obvious trends most of the time. Well, it's kind of the same thing in recovery. You have to zoom out and look at the big picture because comparing day to day and week to week, it's gonna be completely inaccurate. There's gonna be times where you feel good, there's gonna be times where you feel crappier. If you're looking at such a small snapshot of time, it's not gonna give you an accurate representation of your progress. So what you need to do is only ever compare month to month because anything shorter than that, you cannot rely on that information. There's a lot of people who say, oh, last week I was feeling way better, now I feel way worse, I'm going backwards. That's the absolute wrong way to think about it. And if you do think like that, that's a sure way to stay stuck. That will guarantee it. So you do have to zoom out, look at the big picture, and even if you're feeling bad for two weeks at a time, even sometimes three weeks, some adjustment periods can last three weeks and your symptoms can stick around for that long, but then the fourth week, you feel way better and you unlock this new level of health, this new level of less fatigue, less symptoms, more energy, better sleep, all of these things. A month timeline will give you a much more accurate representation. And then compare month to month, or every two months or three months, but never ever look at your daily or weekly trajectory as reliable information because it is not reliable. So if you wanna stay stuck, track your progress every day or every week. That's a sure way to not get better. What you wanna do in order to get better is to track only month to month. Number six is relying on motivation or emotion. Now motivation with this, yes, it's good. It can keep you going, but motivation does not last. And it's really hard to stay motivated when the symptoms are flaring up. What you need to do is instead of relying on motivation or emotion or feeling excited or hyping yourself up, you need to rely on something logical. You need to rely on science because if you're always relying on emotions or motivation, it will always be fluctuating. Something that does not fluctuate is science. Science does not fluctuate. So when you understand this inside and out, when you understand that, okay, when I increase activity, if I do certain things, I could have these symptoms and it's gonna be Adrenaline, there's gonna be lots of wiredness, there's gonna be anxiety for sure, a lot of anxiety, and then there's gonna be tons of fatigue, and I will feel like I'm going backwards. If you can rely on science versus motivation, you will come out of this a lot sooner. So if you wanna stay stuck, continue relying on motivation, continue hyping yourself up, and yes, I'm not saying don't do those things, but you cannot only rely on that. This is a very logical solution. You can't solve this with just emotion and motivation you need to rely on logic. And last but not least, sure way to stay stuck and not get better, one way to guarantee that you don't make any progress is to watch videos just like these and not apply any of the principles. So for people who are watching this, you sitting there right now, whether you're lying in bed or you're watching this because you want to get better, you want to get your life back, you know, you're tired of feeling tired, you're tired of feeling run down of the symptoms, and you just want your life back. So in order to do that, you do have to implement these things in my videos. And for most of the people who watch the videos on this channel, they're doing great. There's so many people who recover that you don't even hear about, who just come across videos like these, apply the principles, and now they're walking eight kilometers, 10 kilometers, when they weren't even able to get out of their bed before. There's people who were mainly housebound, and now they're working again. There's a lot of stories you don't hear. And those are people who have watched videos just like these and they've applied the principles. 
So a sure way to not get better at all is to watch videos like this and not do anything about it. So you should be taking mental notes when you're watching videos just like this and actually implementing it as soon as you can. I know I put a lot of videos on my channel. It can actually feel pretty overwhelming, but if there's a video that really resonates with you, you want to watch that video over and over and over again until you can almost recite it, until it's almost burned into your memory so that way it's just second nature. When you are feeling anxious, instantly my voice pops up or a voice from a video pops up and and it just helps you get past that sticky situation with a lot more ease. So if you're not applying these principles or at least trying to implement them into your situation, they're not going to work. Knowledge is useless without implementation. They say knowledge is power, but only when the knowledge is used. So you have to use this information and apply it. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Like I preach a lot about staying calm during adjustment periods. I preach a lot about swatting away the negative thoughts, swatting away the doubt, and you have to do it hundreds of times per day. It's not complex, it's actually very simple, but a lot of people won't do that. You have to put in the work, and I know you're working really hard right now, just you watching this video right now is work. So go that extra step and actually implement these things, and it's actually gonna help you. Because if you don't do it, if you don't implement this, if you're watching these videos, but nothing's changing, you really have to think about, am I actually implementing these things? These videos will work, all the content I put out works as long as you've had all these other tests and scans done and they've ruled out any other health issues. If they've done that, then this information should work. And if it's not working, then you really have to take an honest look at your situation and really, really ask yourself and be honest, are you actually implementing all this stuff? So I hope you enjoyed this video. The comment highlight of this video is from someone called Fix Me, And he says, I've managed to come up to walking eight kilometers daily thanks to you and working a bit. Slow walks, that is, but it feels good, and I'm not drained after. I feel like I could do more. I'm thinking about what my next step should be, like light weights just at home, or do I go for medium tempo walks, fast walks? Thank you so much for your videos. You are a lifesaver. So this is somebody who has watched the videos, implemented them, and is seeing great, great results. So whoever this is, the Fix Me user on YouTube, shout out to you. Continue implementing these concepts now. Like I said, a lot of this stuff is easier said than done, right? Sometimes you need a little extra help in life. There's a lot of things that people can do on their own. There's things in life that if they did it with a group of people or they were part of a community, then it would just be much, much easier. And that's why I've created the Recovery Jumpstart program. The Recovery Jumpstart program is a very, very interactive, hands-on program where you're not only going through video modules, you're not only on small group coaching calls, but you're actually working one-on-one -on -one with the coaches. It's actually one-on-three -on -three because you work with myself and two other coaches and we can actually build a customized plan for you. We'll look at your situation and figure out, okay, what do you need right now? What should the focus be? So that way it takes a lot of the complexity out of what you need to do to recover because we've been in your shoes, we've been there before, so we can walk you through that. If you did want some extra help, definitely click the link down below. You can apply to the Recovery Jumpstart program. We're always looking for people who are highly motivated, ready to put in 110% effort into this and ready to commit because we wanna help you get your life back. I wish there was information like this sooner. And I just got really lucky because I was paired up with a doctor in the hospital who understood exactly how to get better. And those are the principles I teach on my channel. And the plan he made for me is very similar to the plan that we're gonna create for you so if you did want some extra help, then we would love to work with people who are a good fit for the program. If you're a good fit, we would love to work with you. So make sure to like this video, hit that subscribe button, make sure to hit that notification bell, and always remember that you are a thriver and you are just one mind shift away from living a life with thriving health. I'll see you in the next one.